everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from around the world. Today, we're going to have some fun with layering stencils, and I'm going to be using the new layering stencil from our kit, the Lovely Notes kit. And that stencil is going to be available as a standalone stencil at the end of this month. So for those of you who didn't want to get the kit, that one will be coming separately at the end of the month. And for those of you who did get the kit, whether you have it or it's on its way to you, I think today you're going to have a lot of fun. Now, you can also use this same idea with some of your other layering floral stencils that you have. And we have several in our collection that you guys probably already have in yours too. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hello. Hello. Happy <laughs> afternoon. How are you? Doing okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great to see you. We're both wearing gray today. Yes. Oh my gosh. We didn't even plan that. No, it's uh, it just happens, you know, when you've been together for a few hundred years, <laughs> you reach for the same rainbow <laughs> or lack of because we're in Wisconsin and, and this is the rainbow. The uh, <laughs> the uh, state rainbow in Wisconsin is the gray. <laughs> gray scale is the uh, official color of Wisconsin. It is right now anyway, but uh Hopefully things will warm up here. I hope you're all staying warm. I know my my friend Melanie, Melanie Menchinger, sent me a picture today of like ice storms all over Texas. So you guys in Texas and all over down there where you're not used to that kind of weather, oh, bless your hearts, warm up, get wrapped in a blanket, turn on the heat, get crafting. That That's... Yeah, Texas might be closed for a day or two. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, 30 below wind chill, and, um, you know, there's a 15-minute delay for school. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> well, anyway, let's get started right away with today's card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a scrap, because I have my scrap box right here, of plain white card stock. And I'm going to cut this down just a little bit bigger than I need. So let me get my glasses on here. All right. So I'm going to cut this a little bigger than I need. I'm going to cut it to three and three quarters of an inch by five inches, but then I'm going to cut it down using, probably using master layouts too for this. But I think this is a good size for us to get started. So let me zoom out just a little bit. Oh, I feel so bad for you guys freezing in Texas. That is not fun. All right, I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper, a piece of paper that looks good on the screen. And now the stencil set that I'm going to use today is this one. And this is the layered peony. I really love this stencil. This is one that my daughter Alicia designed and she put all of that detail in there for us. I absolutely love the, the details on this one. It really makes a difference. It's gorgeous without the details. So if you're in a hurry, you can do a quick card with just, um, just this layer right here and it makes a gorgeous flower. But if you want all of that detail in there, you can line that up and get all of those low lights in there. Just beautiful. So let's start by, I'm going to just get a little tiny bit of tape runner and I'm going to tape this cardstock a little bit right in the center. And I'm going to tape it to this paper because I don't want this paper to move. And I'm going to be moving my stencil all around. Now, one thing that you should have if you want to do this kind of thing is you should have a couple post-it notes. Post-it notes are like a staple in my craft room. I have them everywhere and I use them to mask things off quickly. Um, M. Smith, I don't know what black mushroom thing you're talking about. Um, if I you're think talking, that was the, I think that was the uh, Chucky tool. The yeah. Chucky tool. This is a tool that a friend of mine made for me, Chuck. Uh, Meadows made this for me. He took a curtain finial and he put it on a furniture protector pad and he glued it together using some Gorilla Glue. And um, we are in the process of trying to have one of these manufactured, but um, there's been some delays in the process. But you can make this yourself or you can use a simple air hockey paddle. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them, but... Um, and, and there's a reason why I say that, because we're doing one like this, and there isn't one on the market right now that's like this. And there's a reason, and I'll explain that once we get ours up and running. Chuck's design is different than everything else out there. 
All right, so this is um, the stent, the first part of the stencil. And what I recommend is just taping off the leaves. You'll just save yourself a lot of hassle if you just tape off the leaves with some post-it notes. Then you can move this all around and you don't have to worry too much. Now, I also really like the idea of taping off any part that is going to have cardstock close by, you know, like over here, I'm not worried about it, but up here, I want to be free with my brush and I don't want to, um, you know, have to worry about getting smudges. I actually tried this card when I first got the kit and I did get some smudges and I was able to stencil over the smudges, which is kind of cool too. So all right, so we're going to see how I'm going to put this off the stencil. I'm not doing the whole thing on the stencil like I did in my last card where we fussy cut. No fussy cutting on this card. I know you guys don't like it. <laughs> we're not going to fussy cut. So I'm going to bring this up to about here. And then I'm going to use just a little bit of washi tape like that. Yeah, you, there's lots of ways that you can make your own little stamp pressing tool, but none of them have what the Chucky tool has. And so that's why we want to come up with this. And I talked to Chuck. I got his permission to do it. And um, we are going to do it. It's just it's just delayed right now. Okay, a little something there. Let me get rid of that. I don't know what that is. Okay. So I'm going to use a couple of oranges today. I want a really bright, fun card. So I'm going to use Sweet Mango and Tangerine Twist. Those are two really beautiful oranges to use together. And I'm going to start with my lighter of the two, which is the Sweet Mango. Sweet Mango is one of my favorite oranges. Now, if you um, are limited with the amount of... Um, tools that you have, brushes that you have, I would just suggest that you just rub off any ink. You can rub it off on cardstock. You can rub it off on a paper towel and just have one brush for each color family. And you can see I have that here. I have a red brush, an orange brush, yellow, green, teal, blue, purple, pink, brown, and black. And my black brush, I use for gray. My brown brush, I use for craft. My pink brush, I use for everything from innocent pink all the way down to passionate pink. One for each color family. And then I have two extra special ones here. I do have this one for craft because I use craft a lot and I don't want to have to clean it every time. And then I have one for Peach Bellini because Peach Bellini is such a special color to me that I just don't feel like using my orange brush for that. But that's what I have going here, one for each color family. All right, now I am going to ink up my brush using some Sweet Mango. I'm gonna start in the center of this stencil and I'm gonna work my way out toward the edges. So I've got my heaviest color toward the center, and then it does get a little fady as it goes out. So the reason why I'm, I do this is, even though you're gonna have layers that are gonna create your depth, you also can create extra depth by going dark in the center and lighter as you go out to the edges. It almost becomes like a third color because you're dark in here, but you're real pale along the outside. Then when you add your next color, you'll have that dark, pale, and then this next orange. So it gives you almost a three color blend. Okay, I'm gonna move this now. You can see what that looks like, it's so pretty. And now I'm gonna turn this and I am going to bring it in up here with just a little bit of space between these two just a little bit of space. And I am going to put a post-it note right here and right here. Now these post-it notes are reusable. You can see they're not inky at all. You can use the same ones over and over again. When I'm working on lots of crafts, I just have a little box and I throw the post-it notes in them and I just pull them back out and reuse them. So even though it looks like a lot of post-it notes, you're not wasting them. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go heavy in the center. And then as I work my way out, I'm going to get lighter. All 
Okay. Now I'm going to pick that up. And I'm going to wait before I do anything else. I'm going to use this again. So I'm not going to really clean this stencil. But I'll tell you what I did last time. I got orange ink on my finger and I did a thumbprint here. And then I needed to do something here. So <laughs> we're going to do something. We're going to see if we need to do that. If we don't, I'm going to let it go. So I'm going to use the same stencil now to create some green parts. So I'm going to take my post-it notes off so I can use them again. And then this right here, this fits right there. Can you see how these two parts just lay right on top of those two parts right there? So you're going to line that up and then we're going to do a green. So I'm going to do some jelly bean green for the first layer. Get my green brush. And I'm going to do some jelly bean in here. And it's okay if you get a little right there because that is the other leaf. Okay, so there is my green. Now, these do not match up up here, but I am going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to just add a little bit of green right in here, like this. And then right there, you can take a post-it note and you can cut a tiny mask. All you need to do is cut a little half circle like this and just put it right over that. You could do the same thing here, cut a tiny half circle. So you can use these leaves even when, even in spots that it kind of wasn't designed to have anything. There we go. All right. I might get a little green on there, but I'm not super worried about that. And again, I'm going to place a post-it note right here to prevent it from getting onto that edge. So I've added two more right in here. right here. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay. Now I've got a couple extra leaves there. Now I want to do something right here. So I'm going to use this big leaf and I'm going to bring a big leaf right here, just coming in this way. Right there. Let's get it in a good position. We can do it here like that. And then we'll put a post-it note to cover. Just always use those post-it notes to cover the edges. And we'll add a leaf right there. And those colors again? So the first color I used was sweet mango. And this is jelly bean green. So now there are my leaves. Now I'm going to add more in here. I feel like I could have made that a little darker. Should I make it a little darker? We've got time to make it darker. It's easy to replace it right in the spot. I'm going to make it just a little darker. I think that'll look better. It might have been something on that piece of cardstock. It was from my scrap box, so who knows? Now right in here is where I can add a little bit more peach. So I can take this and just find a spot that works, like right there, just like that. And I can add those two leaves, those two petals in, um, the sweet mango. I know I said peach because now I've got peach bellini on my brain since we talked about the brush. So I'm going to go back and add some sweet mango right here. Okay. There we go. Now it's time for layer two. And this is where it gets absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to find the layers here. <laughs> now, 
you want to make sure that you have the stencil going in the same direction as you had this one, right? And you can usually do that by just making sure that Gina K Designs or the name of the stencil is facing the same way. And then you can see where you did that. See how that was turned? So now I know I have to turn this. And I will find the spot. And all you have to do is shimmy it into place until those white lines disappear. There we go. I think that's looking good. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to tape this down where I want it. Oh, I just love the brightness of this. I am so tired of gray. I want sunshine. So I'm making a sunshiny card. <laughs> There we go. I've got all that blocked off now. Now I'm going to switch to Tangerine Twist. So I don't have to clean my brush because I'm going from a light orange to a darker one. So I don't need to worry that I'm going to cross contaminate anything. If I was using this same brush on yellow, I would clean the brush. I would clean it a lot, but I probably wouldn't do that because I definitely like to have yellow brush for yellows and orange brushes for orange. And I do a lot of that. People ask me, well, you know, you said that you have different brushes for distress inks. I do. Not so much because distress ink is such a terribly different formula because their regular distress ink is a water-based dye ink, but because I don't want to contaminate my colors. And then when you're looking at it and you say, oh, I love that orange. And I've got distress orange on my brush. So it's changing the orange and then you buy mine and then you say it doesn't look the same. I want to make sure that I always give you the true colors. So that's why I have so many brushes. You don't need quite as many. All right, now we're going to add this layer in here of this tangerine twist. Let's take a look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful, the way that comes to life? I love it. Hi, Arjita. Is it bedtime for you or is it morning? I don't know. I don't, it, it must be, must be late over there. Arjita's coming in from India. Must be late over there. So thank you for staying up and visiting with us. Okay. I know when we did our lives, our live release parties with our illustrators, it was always hard for Arjita to be there, but now she can because we do the illustrator's spots pre-recorded. All right, I've got that in place. Let me just put this over here just to kind of block that off. And now I'm going to add that second layer. Do you use a different brush for each of your tricolor combinations? No, Susan, I don't. I have one brush that I do for all the lilacs, one for all the carnations. Okay, add this in here. Oh, that's nice. This is making me feel like summer. That pretty? Yes. <laughs> okay. And now we just got to find that little spot that was right there. So if you forget where it was, you can kind of get your original stencil and try to find it. Could have marked it. Could have done better with this one. I think that was it right there. So now that I can see where the leaves are in comparison, then it's going to be easier for me to find those parts. And I think it will be right. Does that look right? I think that looks right. Right there. Okay. And again, I'm blocking that off. Just for these two little flower petals. Pull that up. There we go. So you can see how pretty that is all coming together. Love that. I just love the big boldness of this whole stencil. 
Now we are going to clean up this stencil since we're done with the orange colors. And the way that I do that is I just use my tidy towel. You can use um, whatever you want. You can just take them to the sink and wash them. I don't have a sink in here. So I'm just going to use my tidy towel and clean that up and then clean my space and clean the back too because sometimes when you rub down on it, it pushes color underneath and I don't want to get any orange where I don't want it. And because I don't have a paper towel, let me use my jeans. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Now this, let's see here. I used this one. So I'm going to be using this inner piece right here for the, the leaf. Now I'm going to block this off over here so I don't get any dark spots because I don't want dark spots in, in there. I'm going to block that off. So my first green was jelly bean green and the green that coordinates with it is fresh asparagus. You don't see the stencil on the site because it, it's actually part of a kit right now and the kit just sold out. So this stencil will be back in stock at the end of February as a standalone item. But I always promise everybody that if you're gonna, like we do thousands of kits every month. And for all the people that bought those kits, I always promise them I'm gonna keep showing them how to use their kit. I don't wanna stop just because it's sold out. But we will be getting um, tons of these stencils in and they will be available toward the end of February when our next release happens. Okay, so jelly bean, uh, jelly bean green and fresh asparagus work beautifully together. And I'm going to add a little bit of fresh asparagus right in here in these details. I'm not going super heavy. I don't want it to be like really, really heavy. This can get really dark. You can see it's a dark green. But I just want to give it a mist of color like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here, but I'm going to have to use my little, these little things that I made. So I'm going to put them on underneath here just to block this. And where did the other one go? Here it is. I think it was right there where I put it. And then I can lay these on here. Mm, I might need another little piece too. Nope, I think that's going to be okay. I don't think that's going to be a problem. So... I use those little pieces that I made at first to make the first green to block things off. And I'm adding this second green right over that and right over here, being careful not to go to the edge. If you're a messy stenciler, put a post-it note right there, right here, just so it doesn't get on your cardstock. And then let me pull these off didn't get in the way. And then we're going to do this last one, which is the freestanding one. This one's easy. Just lay that right in there. And place a post-it note there. And get some of that darker green. All right, look at that. Isn't that pretty? And we've got so many layering stencils that this kind of technique will work with. For example, if you wanted, if you like this idea for Christmas cards, let me pull this off because it can be really distracting with everything around the outside. Let me pull this off. You can see how that looks. <laughs> so um, you can do this with our poinsettia stencil. You can do this with the Delightful Blooms stencil. There are so many different stencils that you can do this with, this whole technique where you can do part of a big flower. We have that big, um, oh goodness, I don't know if I have that here. I, did, I got a bunch of kits that I have to take apart. But even like if you wanted to do this with snowflakes, our big stellar snowflake, you could have part of it coming in up here and part of it coming in up here. So any of the real big stencils, it's a great way to use them. All right. And we do check our website for some of the big floral stencils we have. 
a lot of times when people see those stencils, they think there's only one way to use it. Yes, the zinnia. Thank you, Sandy. That's the flower I couldn't think of. The zinnia would be perfect for that. And that's huge, but it's the same kind of thing. And even though that's not a layering stencil, with the zinnia, you can actually do a light pink and then you can go over certain areas with a smaller blending brush one of our baby blending brushes and you can get into the smaller areas and add that second um second color yes the black mat's gonna kill it right i can't wait to do the black mat all right let's die cut this so i have my die cutting machine here and Tom, I didn't ask you if you have any kind of word planned for today. <laughs> I think I might have something. Oh, you do? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get to that in a minute. So, so hang on. <laughs> okay. Let's lay this down onto the die cutting machine here. And then I'm going to use Master Layouts 2 for this. That's why I cut it a little bigger than Master Layouts 2. I originally cut it three and three quarters of an inch by five, which is still a nice size. That would be the Master Layouts 1 side. Um, but I want to get that little stitched edge in here. So I'm going to pick the area that I want. I'm going to bring it down more to this corner because I want more of the flowers and a little less of that greenery is fine with me. And then we'll cut this out. Yes, that's a great idea, making backgrounds. So you can make a bunch of these just as backgrounds. This is a great mojo starter when you don't want to be die cutting and you don't want to make a mess and you just want to kind of sit with your blending brushes and your favorite inks. You could do this in every color combination you have. Oh, I forgot to take that tape off the back, so it's stuck to my thing. You know, if you ever have tape like that and you just want to get rid of it, you don't want it to be so tapey, you could just take your embossing magic pad and pat on it a little bit and it just takes the stickiness away so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. Now we're going to do the black panel. So let's get a black panel. I've got them because I did all my cardstock organizing. I'm using up my scraps like crazy. That's actually a really pretty panel for something if it was... <laughs> I did get new die cutting plates, right? I have to get new plates every now and then. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's a guilty pleasure of mine to get new die cutting plates. They're not that expensive and it just feels like such a treat. Okay, so we'll cut that out. Yes, you have to look, Teresa, and see what big flowers you have because you'll be surprised how this technique, you know, just moving them around. Because again, most people, when you see a big stencil like that, the first thing you think is, okay, there's one real, there's just one way to use it. But there's so many ways to use it. I think Mindy Egan recently did a, um, and I think she's here. Hi, Mindy. I think I saw you. Um, she did one using this stencil and she made the flowers rainbow. And she did all like light rainbow colors on them first. And then with the second layer, she went through and did all the like darker um, compatible rainbow colors. And it's absolutely beautiful. I don't even know if she used different colors. She may have just used a light hand and a heavier hand, but it's really pretty card. So check hers out too. She didn't add leaves on hers. Um, hers are just all the big, beautiful peonies. So check that out. Check out our video. Okay, so you can see the black really makes it pop. Now, because of that, I really struggled with what kind of greeting to do. And I believe that my kind of rule of thumb, and it doesn't always stand up because sometimes I switch it up. If I do one big flower, I think a big greeting looks really great. But I also think a small greeting looks really great. But when you have a big, busy background like this, Big images with a small greeting look great and small images with a big greeting look great. So I'm going small on this greeting here. And I also think because of this black background that I should definitely use one of either, you know, a strip sentiment where you cut it out of black cardstock and stamp it with white and do white embossing powder or one of our sentiment strips 
in black. And I think that's what I'm going to do today. I think hello, friend, although with love and prayers would be really nice. This would actually make a very pretty sympathy card in pinks or maybe the lilacs, kind of the more muted tones. But this one I'm going to do hello, friend, because I think that will just be fun. And because I'm sending it to one of you and you guys are all my friends, I think that would be nice to send you this card. And if you're new to Gina K Designs and you don't know how to enter to win an opportunity, all you have to do is drop a comment. Also, if you want to give the video a thumbs up, the like button, we would love you to hit the like button because that really does help the channel. So thank you so much for considering that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut this out using this little strip sentiment die. What you saw here are two different die sets. It's the strip sentiments and also the large strip sentiments. And then I have a duplicate in here too, so... It's not, the count is not exactly accurate, but you can find that on our website under dyes. Okay. The name of the flower is the layered peony, and it is, it, it was in the kit that just sold out, and it will be back in stock as a regular standalone dye at the end of February. So I hope that helps. But again, other beautiful stencils that will work are the Zinnia, the um, Bodacious, is it Bodacious Bloom or Delightful Blooms works really nicely for this. Even our Stellar Snowflake if you want, and the Poinsettia if you wanted to get started early on your Christmas cards. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do myself a favor and take this off now and put it back because I have thrown this die out before, which is why I have more in there because I had to get a second set, which is frustrating. You don't want to do that. All right. I think that's good. Now we're going to pick a card base. And then I'm going to see if I have one of those other flowers. And even if I can't make a full second card, I think I would be able to at least show you how to stencil it all out. I'm going to use just a white card base for this because there's so much beautiful color and I don't want to take away from everything that's going on in the design. So I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock to four and a quarter by 11 and I'm going to turn that into a card base. Where did I put my score buddy? Oh, here it is with everything on it. All the post-it notes, everything was hiding. And I'm going to, let's put that away. I'm going to score this at a five and a half inch mark. Now, if you're a new stamper, and I know we get a lot of new stampers that are just getting started into card making. These stencils are a great thing to invest in to start with, different stencils. Get a couple ink colors, a couple stencils, and some blending brushes, and you can make absolutely beautiful cards. And if you're a scrapbooker, I know we have a lot of scrapbookers that we're bringing over to the dark side of card making. <laughs> um, if you're a scrapbooker, these stencils are nice and big, and you could stencil a whole 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock and make a beautiful background for your photos, for your scrapbooks. These stencils are also great for home decor because they're so big. I actually saw, I don't know where I saw it, but somebody had this stencil, and they actually spray painted, they masked it all off, and they spray painted the top of a dresser with it, and it was absolutely beautiful. Those beautiful peonies. So the big stencils are really fun. And that's going to go there. And then I'm just going to pop that little greeting right here. See how cute that looks? And it doesn't take away from anything. I don't even think I'm going to pop it up. I think I am going to put a couple little sequins on here. But that's about all I'm going to do. I'm going to lay it right in this emptier space here where there's some white. Okay. And then we'll add a couple little sequins. We'll put one there where I have a little blotch. <laughs> Let's zoom in a little closer so you guys can see it better. All right. So, disco ball, shall we? These are in my magnetic dish instead of the dyes that should be in this magnetic dish. 
I need to get a couple little plates. I have a little, I have an, a, a little love affair with tiny dishes. And when I go to places and I see tiny dishes, I like to get them. I've got all different kinds of little dishes everywhere on my desk. This one was given to me by my friend Dawn from Thermoweb. It says, give me glitz, which is perfect. And I have little die cuts in that one. So I have my little dish collection everywhere. I like little sushi dishes. I think they make great little sequin holders. All right, so I'll put a little sequin there, one there, and one over here. We could do a second one, maybe there, and another one there. So we'll add five sequins to this mix. That is a big blob of glue. I don't need quite that much. So we'll do small sequins, I think. I've got the micro disco ball in here too, so these are really tiny. I like the big ones too. I, I like the mix, actually. I think it's kind of fun to have a mix. Put a bigger one in there. And we'll do one more right there. Ooh, that's a big blob of glue. Okay, so that just gives us a little sparkle and shine in the open spaces. And there is that finished card. Yeah, I really like just not much going on, letting the stencil just kind of do its thing. Okay, let's back up this a little bit. And now I'm gonna see what stencils I have in here. My stencil box is very disorganized, as you can see. I'm always flying by the seat of my pants, trying to find whatever I need. That point set is a great one. Yeah, just ignore, <laughs> ignore my messiness. I really want to find the zinnia. Well, this is a nice one too. This is a really nice one. This is the floral stencil. And this one's kind of fun because it actually has like everything in one place. And you can use post-it notes for this as well. That's a really fun one. Maybe I'll do that one. I just want to see if the zinnia is in here or if I haven't pulled it out of the kit that it came in yet. Again, I'm sorry. See, I'm real, guys. I am totally real. I've got Simon Hurley stencils in here. I've got all kinds of stuff. Oh my goodness, what a mess I am. <gasps> zinnia. Here she is. All right, let's use that. And you see, not even putting it back, throwing it in there for another horrific search later. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this aside and then we'll look at these both again later. And I think I'm going to use the same colors just because I want to show you how nicely this one can work too. So I quick cut this down to that same size the four, I'm sorry, the three and three quarters by five. And once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just tape the back of it and tape it into this spot right there. Okay. What did I do with the stencil? Oh, here it is. <laughs> That's how quickly you can lose things. Now, this one might be a little easier because the leaves are way off here and you can use you know, this stencil without worrying about the leaves getting in the way like that because it's pretty consistent all around. So let's do, we'll do the same kind of layout too, just to show you how we can work it. Oh, Judy, I'm telling you, I am, I am a mess. If there's anybody out there that thinks they're a mess, I guarantee you I am a little bit more of a mess than you. <laughs> So thank you. I'm glad that that makes you feel like you can relate to me. Because <laughs> I am you. We are the same. Okay. We're going to go back to the sweet mango again. And then I got to get my brush. Now, this has tangerine on it. So I'm going to rub some of that tangerine off. I ran out of paper towels earlier. I forgot to get a refill. And now I'm going to ink my brush up using the Sweet Mango. Um, I do have a sticky mat and I could use it. I, you know, 
I'm so used to using this. I just have to get in the habit of using it, Mary. All right, so nice light color on this. And now I'm going to get an orange brush here, like a mini brush. And I'm going to use my tangerine on this brush. And I'm going to start heavy in the center with the tangerine. And then I'm going to kind of work my way in little lines going around. Almost like you could see little lines going around like planets circling. <laughs> there we go. Adding a little bit of that in there. Let's just see how that looks. Oh, that looks really pretty. So I've got some darks and lights in there. You see how it kind of fades in and out between dark and light? Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to get fairly close. And I'm going to go with the light color. Alrighty. Yeah, I should use a sticky mat. You're right. You guys are right. You're always right. This is such a pretty stencil. Love this one. And again, with the darker, I'm going to go dark in the center, and then I'm just going to bring like a ring of color out here, and then another ring of color out here. Some darks and lights. Okay, so a few requests for the word of the day. Yeah, let's do the word of the day. Okay, so it's so a quick one. So, um, okay, your uh, the word of the day is non-core non-core so if you're at the state fair or one of your local outdoor events in the summer and you're enjoying a corn dog at the edge of the crowd and <laughs> the band that's playing isn't particularly to your liking <laughs> just not your cup of tea and you um realize that it's their last song and everybody claps and what you're hoping for at that point is a non-core. <laughs> similar, similar to a novation. <laughs> That's very funny. I love the state fair reference too. The non-core. Oh my gosh. Word of the day. <laughs> so when I'm doing, um, leaves that have these loose pieces, I kind of like to work my brush toward the edge in the direction that these actually are coming out of the stencil. You don't want to kind of brush back on them or it'll lift them up. So instead of doing a circular motion, do more of a strokey motion like that. And then let me get a darker brush. Here's my dark green. Here's my dark green. I don't know what's on there, but we'll go with a little fresh asparagus, fresh asparagus. We'll do the same thing. We'll get that right in that. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. I love this. This is so cute. All right, same thing here. We're just dropping those three lumps over three little petals. There we go. And again, we're covering that up. I do have two ink stands too, but I seem to be going back and forth with my one. I told Brianne from the ink stand store, ink stand shop, that I wanted black. And she told me that they can't spray paint outside in the winter. So I'm waiting for black. I'm excited to get black. I like the white ones. But I want black to match my black misty. 
And then we'll do the same thing again with that fresh asparagus and we'll just go right along the edges like that just to darken it up in there. Oh, that's pretty. Now, if you want, you can add another little leaf in here. I think a leaf might work better. That's a lot of orange and busyness. So if we put a leaf in here, I might be able to get this into a full card. We'll see. I think that's fine. I'm going to use what's left on this brush. This is the jelly bean green. And then the fresh asparagus. Could use a little more of that. Okay. So I kind of feel like that's going to be busy enough for this card. And if you wanted, to, you know, you could add a, you could go back over this and instead of just doing the two oranges, you could go with orange and then a little red to really make it pop a little bit more. Um, but I like the oranges here and I kind of enjoy that these cards are going to work together. This could be the start of a little box of uh, gift cards, this idea. So let's go ahead and cut this one out the same way that we cut the last one. And we'll pick a greeting. And I think I've got time to finish a second card. I did not think that would happen today. Every once in a while, you know, you just kind of know what you want to do. And it goes a little faster. And also, that just shows you how quick stenciling is. Oh, did you see my little mess here? I got a little green right there because I didn't, I didn't mask that off properly. But we'll throw a greeting over that. And we'll do some sequins. Let's see. Um, we can make this one a birthday card. And go with happy birthday. That could be fun. I could also put some sequins there too. So there's all kinds of ways to cover up your boo-boos. Or you can just let it go because probably they wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't care. They would just love the card. It's just a tiny smudge. So it's not the worst. All right, we're going to cut this one out with Master Layouts 2 again. The zinnia would look great in hot pink. Absolutely, Kat. I agree with you. And purples, too. And blues. Oh, my goodness. You know, and sometimes with these, you can do one in one color and one in another color and, you know, have just like a pink and a purple or pink, purple, and a little blue one coming in from the side. But the bright orange is fun and I don't give enough love to orange. So that was my goal today. I know I say orange, orange, orange. I say that wrong, Tom. <laughs> my East Coast is coming out. My Philadelphia, orange. <laughs> But you gotta, you gotta love me anyway, even even with my accent sometimes. And we'll do happy birthday. So let me get that little strip sentiment die. That's gonna be a little big. I think I'll go down one size. And sometimes I want that strip sentiment to be a little bigger and other times I just want to tighten it up. I can use some of these pieces of washi tape from my stencil. Yeah, the zinnias are, are, are just a beautiful flower. I love, you know, just the bright, summery and zinnias. They can, they can go right into the fall, right? I guess it depends where you live. Some of these flowers are just year-round flowers. If you live in a nice, warm climate. And don't quote me on my flowers or my flower names ever, because that is not, I mean, that is not a skill that I have. 
I see people that look at stuff and go, oh, that's a such and such. And I mean, wow, I can't do that. It's a flower. That's what it is. It's one of those puffy flowers or one of those skinny flowers. <laughs> Alrighty, now we'll just put these together. And I think that little black strip sentiment really does add so much. Just that nice little extra pop of black in there really brings it to life. Mmm, it's so pretty. Now, if you wanted to, you could also take your orange brush and you could blend color around this as a third color just to fill in some of the white in there if you prefer a little less white. But I'm not going to do it now because it's all attached to the card. I think we'll put that right. We're going to put it right here. Even though it doesn't cover the thing, I feel like that's where it needs to be. It doesn't cover my smudge, but that's all right. We're going with the smudge. And my little sequins, still have them out. I've just been like glue crazy. I've been using way too much glue lately. I like a big sequin in there sometimes. I'll put a tiny one on the biggest glue spot. Makes sense. One more down there. Let go. That one didn't want to let go. There we go. Oops. Stop touching it. Okay. Gotta touch that one though. All right. So there is the second card. Let's zoom in a bit on this one. Here is the second card. Here is the first card. Lots of peach, pink, wow. orange. That's the color, orange right there. That's the color. We'll decorate it a little bit with sequins. How pretty is that? <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, those are my finished cards. So we're gonna give both of them away. I just really wanted to get that second one done today. So let's start with the peony card. Orange is my favorite color. Is it? I, it is. That's it right. Orange is your favorite color. <laughs> all my years. It's just so sunny and fun. It is. Okay. So let's do a drum roll. Okay. <laughs> the cheesy drum roll. Oh, and this cheesy. card, this <laughs> card goes to Stephanie Olson. Stephanie. Stephanie. You got it, Congratulations, Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah. All right, that is the peony, Stephanie. Now we're going to give away the beautiful zinnia. Okay, and the beautiful zinnia. That goes to Maggie Wakeman. Maggie, Maggie. congratulations, Maggie. This card goes to you. All right, ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to, to info at ginakdesigns.com and let us know which card you won, and I will get those right out to you. Well, everybody, this was so much fun. I will be back this weekend with another five-minute card video, and then Tom and I will be back again next Tuesday night with another Stamp and Chat Live. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy, and we love you all so very much. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again well, real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.